So hello everyone, um, I'm Emma from Microsoft and I'm a partner channel development manager supporting partners uh, such as Greencorn and I'm here today as June said to give you an introduction to Windows 10 um, and a demo of some of the features. But just before we get started, uh, we live in a world where that's we live in a world where that's rapidly changing and rapidly transforming with big trends such as mobility, cloud, big data, and even social. And these trends are all accelerating this transformation. So let's talk a little bit about a bit more about these trends. So what's changed? That is the consumerization of IT. Today's mobile revolution presents a dynamic and complex picture, a constant movement among locations and devices some of which are company owned and some that are personally owned, we all, have, we all have a lot of choice these days and we become attached to our chosen devices. It's estimated that over 60% of the devices in the workplace today are post personally owned. And with those devices, we're always connected and there's an app for pretty much everything, whether that's web-based, cloud-based, some of these apps are company provisioned and some we self-purchase. All the while, we are moving, sharing, and storing data, some on the device, some on removable storage, such as USB keys, uh, some on-premise in SharePoint, or some in the cloud, uh, such as OneDrive or Dropbox. Some of this data is secure, but much of it is not. All of our applications need data, but we need to find better ways to control and secure that data. Windows 10 is a massive step forward in helping us to achieve this. So, on to Windows 10. Uh, in October 2014, we launched a new initiative called the Windows Insider Program. The goal of this program was to engage users early, inviting them into the, our development process for Windows 10. Imagine having over a million product testers. Well, we do. Over 1.5 million people engaged and growing every day. Over 2.75 million devices are running Windows 10 in over 100 countries across the globe which means we are gathering millions of pieces of feedback to help us make this the best Windows ever. Microsoft was 40 years old in April, uh, and a lot has changed in 40 years. Technology has come and gone, devices have come and gone. But what has remained is that we will always be, and we always have been, and always will be an innovative company. Windows 10 is not just another release of Windows, it is a new generation of Windows. It's built so that users can interact with a variety of devices that will be powered by Windows in the most natural of ways. It could be touch, ink, speech, mouse or keyboard, and even holograms. It's a very different Windows in the way we deliver it and the way we keep it alive. It is going to be Windows as a service. So with Windows 10, we're bringing our entire family um, of experiences together from um, headless IoT devices uh, to the phone, tablets, PCs, up to the amazing new Surface Hub, which you may have heard about, and beyond into the world of holograms. Um, it is one development platform, uh, it's one store, one commerce platform, and one universal app model. Windows Universal Apps will enable the UI to scale seamlessly from the phone to tablet and beyond, providing a familiar and productive experience regardless of the type uh, of the device type. Finally, one platform means one management platform and security model across all of these devices. So, Microsoft believes uh, it's the best device platform for modern business. Designed for the modern world of cloud, services and mobility, Windows 10 is simple to use. If you know how to use Windows 7, you'll know how to use Windows 10 and the look and feel will be consistent across all Windows 10 devices, from PCs to tablets to phones. Windows 10 is also tightly integrated with the cloud, from web apps and browsing to Windows Store apps, Windows Desktop apps, communications, and file storage. So, just to pick out a couple of points on the screen that you can see, it's tailored to form factor. The user experience, or UX, for a Windows 10 PC looks like what you'd expect on a Windows PC, while at the same time behaving as you would expect when it's running on a tablet or a smartphone. It actually has the intelligence to adapt to the device you're choosing. So it will know, for example, when you have a keyboard docked into your tablet and automatically adjust, which I'll show you later. Universal applications across devices. With Windows 10, users get the same experience across all devices. 
the universal app platform allows developers to write apps that run across Windows, smartphones, tablets, and PCs using the same code with minimal, if any, changes. The experience is much simpler, more streamlined, and more familiar. So, Cortana. What is Cortana? Not what, it's who. Cortana is your clever new personal assistant, and she can search the web, find things on your PC, keep track of your calendar, change events, set reminders, uh, and even answer questions. She can even tell you the uh, odd joke or two. You can just speak naturally or type your request into the search box, which, again, I'll show you later. OneDrive built-in cloud storage. So for those of you who know the, that know OneDrive, OneDrive is built-in, so all your files automatically sync and are available wherever you are. And collaboration works extremely well with Office web apps, built into Outlook.com. If you use Office 365, you can use the same user account, and it lets you save to OneDrive or OneDrive for Business automatically. So the Windows Store. The Windows Store is the one big store where you can conveniently and confidently acquire Windows apps that run across all of your devices. Synchronize settings across devices. When you use your Microsoft account or an Office 365 ID, your account, preferences, favorites, settings, um, and apps synchronize between devices. Um, and Microsoft Edge, which I'll show you a little bit later, it's built for the modern web, and to put the web to work for you, it's cleaner, smarter, and better at all the things you do online. So, affordable and innovative devices. Even today, Windows devices are designed to work where you are. From thin and light notebooks, and two-in-ones that convert from tablets into laptops to featherweight, uh, feather light tablets, and all the way to phones. It should not be hard to find a device with the right price point, feature set, and performance levels to address your needs, from desktop PCs to laptops, tablets, and phones. Microsoft knows that every pound matters to the SMB business, and that's why we've designed Windows 10 to run on extremely minimal hardware designs with ultra-low requirements. Windows 10 is driving not only device innovation, but device revolution as well. HoloLens and Surface Hub are two examples of how Windows is changing the business device landscape, and I will share some of these links later in the next steps so you can take a look at these. Windows 10 fundamentals can also light up your existing devices. Depending on the device you upgrade to with Windows 10 or buy new, you should enjoy things like improved boot times, longer battery life, better, better performance, and better security. Simple to set up and manage. Now, let's discuss another area where Windows 10 is particular. In particular, is the right choice for the small and medium businesses. Of course, one of the great benefits of Windows has been the ability to upgrade existing devices without needing to buy new hardware. And Microsoft plans to provide a few options for deploying Windows 10 in your business. For existing devices that meet the minimum hardware requirements for running Windows 10, the easiest approach will be to use the in-place upgrade process to move to, from Windows 7, Windows 8, or Windows 8.1 directly to Windows 10. If you already have Office 365, then you already have access to basic mobile device management functions, or MDM for short. Windows 10 plugs right into that functionality. You don't need to buy any new tools to get started with MDM. Microsoft plans to deliver new innovation to Windows 10 devices on a regular basis. Windows 10 will offer customers a choice between continuous uh, and immediate updates, frequent and more proven updates, and security and patches only update model for long-term stability. So um, this is probably the most aggressive Microsoft slide I've ever seen. Um, usually they're nice and fluffy with clouds on them. But uh, this explains the evolution of the security landscape really, really well. 
So we, sort of 2003, 2004, we kind of had things called script kiddies, and these were attacks that were just a little bit annoying. People creating pop-ups tend to be kind of younger people, um, but didn't kind of cause any cause any real threat to us. Um, we then sort of moved on to organised crime. So if anyone has had emails asking for bank details, strange phone calls, text messages, whatever it might be, um, that's kind of what we have at the moment. But actually, it's gone a little bit step, uh, a step further than that. Um, Sony is probably the most recent high-profile security breach. Um, it's a great example of a political motive. Their motives are different from what we've seen in the past, and they seem to be increasing to be focused on damage and disruption rather than just mass IP theft. We're truly in a new area where the costs of getting breached aren't as fuzzy as they used to be. They are easily quantified and they are balance sheet impacting. So, with enterprise quality security for SMBs with Windows 10, um, on the left, um, so Trusted View App Security, this is everything we did have in Windows 8, but on your right, these are all going to be new things with Windows 10. So next generation credentials, things like iris scanning, uh, fingerprint scanning, uh, 3D facial recognition, voice recognition, all really pretty cool stuff. Um, and with Windows Hello, um, which is going to be enabled on some of the new Windows 10 devices, you'll be able to actually log into your PC um, just with your face. So it'll scan your iris and it will know that it's you. Um, next generation authentication, so this is with something called Act, uh, Azure Active Directory, if you've heard about it. Um, and you will use your login, um, your login for Windows 10, your PC, um, and it will log you into all your other applica applications as well. So for anyone who uses authentication today, um, you will kind of use one login for all your different applications, so it's just an easy way of, uh, of doing things. Um, enterprise data protection, um, so all files that are created on a Windows 10 machine, will be encrypted at file level. So, you know, if it is stolen or something happens to that file, it is encrypted. And device guard, um, this is building on trusted boot. So technology, um, it makes sure that certified code can run. So um, the device has to say what can run, so, sorry, IT has to say what um, code can run on that device, and therefore lots of malware can't run. Um, so no kind of attacks can be deployed onto that machine. So, which additions will there be? So, Windows 10 desktop additions. So, Windows Home, this will be the mainstream consumer focused edition of Windows 10, um, offering a familiar and personal experience um, that will be updated with the latest security features on an ongoing basis. Windows 10 Home will come pre-installed on new devices as well as being available through retail channels. Uh, Windows 10 Pro, this is the, the edition designed for um, SMBs and enables organizations to manage their devices and apps, protect all your data, uh, facilitate remote and mobile scenarios, as well as take advantage of the cloud technologies for your organizations. Customers with Windows 10 Pro devices will take advantage of the latest security and feature updates on an ongoing basis or having the ability to install new feature updates after those have been validated in the board market. Windows 10 Enterprise builds on Windows 10 Pro by adding more advanced features designed to address the needs of large and mid-sized organizations. Having said that, a loss of SMB business will be after the Windows 10 Enterprise Edition because it does give you um, the full features. So you don't necessarily have to be a, a mid-sized or a large enterprise to have this, have this version. And I'll send this um, this slide out to you, and June's going to follow up with, in, with, the, with all the information. Um, but this just gives you um, a snapshot of all the different uh, features within Home Pro and Enterprise. So you can choose which one is going to be the best uh, addition for you and your business. Now, you've probably all heard a lot about Windows 10 being uh, a free upgrade, and for many customers, that will be true for the first year. Windows 7 and 8.1 Enterprise Edition is not included in the free upgrade offer. Um, additionally, to apply for the free upgrade, the device must be connected to Windows Update. 
when we say for the first year, what we mean by that is uh, if you buy a new device, you will need to go and pay for a new edition of Windows 10. So if you have a current um, laptop, PC, whatever it might be, um, you can get a free upgrade today or get a free upgrade when it's released on the 29th of July. Um, but if you change your device, then you will need to license that device with Windows 10. So just to recap, um, the value we're delivering aligns with four promises or, uh, promises or investment areas. First, protecting businesses against modern security threats. Uh, enabling businesses to manage continuous innovation through Windows as a service um, and, and staying current and getting all the benefits of the new features when they're available. Um, and it's all about reinventing productivity and having the best of breed technology for you and your business. And finally, we will light up these innovations um, on a massive portfolio of device form factors unmatched in the industry. So these are some next steps for you. Um, I talked a bit about the Windows Insider program. If you do want Windows 10 today, um, then you can go and download it. Um, I'm running the technical preview, um, but I would probably advise to um, test it on a separate PC. Um, but for what I've seen, it, it's pretty stable. It uh, has got some great features. Um, and I've also got a couple of links here as to how to reserve your copy of Windows 10 uh, for when it launches, and also how to actually upgrade your PC to Windows 10. And as I said, June will follow up, follow up and send all these out to you. So before I show you some of the new features, are there any questions? No? OK, well, if there are any questions, um, please feel free to let Greencorn know, um, and I'm happy to follow up with you um, at a later date. So for those of you who haven't seen Windows 10, this is the uh, latest build. So as you can see here, um, I'm on the Windows 10 Enterprise Insider Preview, uh, build 10159. This is the latest build that is available. Um, it's got pretty much all the features that are going to be available once it's launched, um, but they're just sort of finalizing a few bits, and you've got a few weeks to go. So we learned a lot about Windows 8. Um, you may be surprised to learn that Windows 8.1 actually had the highest customer satisfaction rating we've ever had, but only if you were using a touch device. However, many of our users felt that without touch, the learning curve was really steep and the experience was unfamiliar. So with Windows 10, uh, we are building on the best of what was in Windows 7 and 8 uh, to create that familiar experience for all of our users. So as you may have seen, uh, the start menu is back in Windows 10, and it's better than ever. So whether you're coming from Windows 7 uh, or Windows 8, it will feel quite familiar. So as you can see, I've pinned my apps into groups based on my interests, but we've also added the jump uh, list back to the taskbar in the most recent builds, which is something that our Windows 7 lovers had been requesting. On the left, I've got my most recently used apps. Um, and you will see that not only uh, we had actually moved the power button, you can see it down here. We had had it up here, but with the Insider program, uh, we received so much feedback from all the users to say, we think it needs to be down here. They moved it. So it really kind of shows you the power of the feedback that we've had whilst developing this. So I've got my mostly used apps. But also, um, I can pin things here, documents, file explorer, settings, just so they're easy to, easy to get hold of. Um, so within the start menu, um, I've got a mix of older traditional applications, um, like Excel, um, but also new modern applications, including live tiles. Uh, live tiles give me uh, up-to-date information about all the things I care about without actually having to open the app. Um, and I can pin as much or little as I, I like on the start screen, and you can personalize um, the layout. Um, you can resize any of these applications. And if you like having a large start screen, um, you can pull it all the way to the top. Or if you want a small start screen, you can have it as small as you like. 
So let's talk about applications. Um, so since Windows is now the same uh, core across PC, tablet, phone, and Xbox, it means developers can write an app once and it will look great across all screens. Um, the best device is the one that you're on, and it also means that users will get a familiar experience no matter what Windows device they are using. So, I'm just going to show you the Maps application. Uh, the Maps app, which is part of the suite of inbox apps that are free, and this will come pre-installed with Windows. Um, I can get traffic information, um, I can information uh, rich local search results and uh, public transportation options um, with a consistent app experience across PC and phone. So I'm just going to quickly do a search uh, for one of my favourite places. And as you can see, uh, this is the outer lounge in Reading, if anyone wants to go. Um, it's a lovely place, um, but I can see all the local results here. Um, and keep in mind, this app has offline support, so I'll never feel lost, even if I have no inter internet connection. But not only does it tell you where it is, it gets you lots of information, contact details, and overview, views, things like that. Now, if I was to make this app um, narrower, um, the app adjusts um, its UI to display content in a narrow orientation. So it's always you're always seeing it in the best view. The feedback we heard uh, from Windows 8 was that our full screen app experience did not feel familiar. So uh, we've addressed this in Windows 10. So I can run this full screen like so, but I can also run it in the window as I was showing you earlier. In Windows 10, I can inter interact with Windows the way I am used to. Um, and if I wanted to, I can snap uh, the application to the left and choose um, another application to run alongside. And actually, I can do a quadrant snap as well, so I can have four different applications running running at once. So, multiple desktops. It's another great feature. So if you find your screen is getting a bit crowded, click this button here. You can just create uh, a, a new virtual desktop to gain more space and work with uh, just the items that you want. Um, this will help you streamline your workflow in the way that it makes sense. Um, I tend to have a desktop for work uh, and then a separate virtual desktop for any personal tasks um, like web browsing, shopping, that sort of thing. So as you can see, this is my second desktop. I've got the weather up, another health and fitness app and some personal things around people and contact details. Um, so some continuum which I wanted to show you. So this is essentially tablet mode. Now I'm using a Surface Pro 3 um, to do this webinar. Um, so I could pull the keyboard off if I wanted to or just flip the keyboard back. However, in this little notification pane, I can click tablet mode. And as you will see, my apps will go full screen and things will change a little bit. The start screen is full screen. Um, as I would like, uh, most likely want to use it um, in a touch environment first, so obviously using it like this. But if you wanted to make it smaller, you absolutely could do. And then you can just click back if you don't, if you want to um, take yourself out of tablet mode. So Cortana, uh, Cortana has. I'm going to turn Cortana off because you can hear me. So Cortana's canvas um, is showing me up-to-date info um, that is unique to me. So I can personalize um, Cortana. So I've got traffic, and um, so I know um, how long does it take to get home. I've got my calendar. Um, I've got uh, finance information um, if I want to see any of the stocks. 
um, and I've got some of the health news, things like that, the weather, anything that's really important to me, you can personalize. Um, and we've got a menu, an expandable menu here, um, but we've also got things like um, connected accounts. So you can now, something we announced a couple of days ago, you can now integrate Office 365 into Cortana. Um, so you can see documents, things like that. So there's lots more integration going into Cortana and into Windows 10 um, and will be launched um, as of the 29th um, of July. I've also integrated LinkedIn, um, so you'll get updates, um, you know, what's happening on LinkedIn, requests, things like that, all just from your, um, all from Cortana, from the home page, um, just keep you updated. Um, the other thing that's quite cool about Cortana um, is she can do certain uh, tasks without you having to switch apps. Um, so she can uh, become a calculator. You can ask her questions um, instead of searching the web. You can type them in. You don't necessarily have to voice your questions. I know some people don't actually like talking uh, to their PC, um, but you can type any, any kind of commands in, that sort of thing. So she's very, very helpful. Um, the new browser for Windows 10 is called Edge. Um, code name was Project Spartan, um, but it's in this build that I'm on now of Windows 10, um, it's now officially um, branded as Edge. Um, I really like using Edge. Um, there's probably three, three sort of main um, functions that I use it for. Um, so you can add your favorites or you can add to a reading list. So if you're looking at a specific um, blog or article. Um, so let's have a look at this one here. So this was the Women's World Cup, uh, the loss yesterday, quite devastating. Um, but you can use something called Reading View, which is this button here. So usually when you're browsing the web, um, if you're looking at an article, there will be tons of um, other advertisements, kind of distractions around the screen. But if you click Reading View, it just focuses, focuses you in on the content that you're looking at. So you can read your article without getting bothered with um, other adverts, and they're going to get you distracted. The other thing that's great about Edge is you can now draw. So put a smiley face, you can make notes. Um, but even if you're not on a touch device, obviously I am using a Surface Pro 3, um, but you can make notes. So whether you're touch or non-touch, you can still make notes within web pages. You can then actually share this with someone. And um, I've only got set up to share with my OneNote at the moment. Um, but I can then share this web page with all the annotations that I've used. I can add some notes if I want to. And I'll just sh then share that, share that with them. Um, with my OneNote. So the other thing I wanted to show you, this is going to load. There you go. So if you um, if you're on a web page, if you highlight, uh, let's just uh, example for a country at the moment. Um, if you highlight it, right click and ask Cortana. She's going to give you information about that place. So it doesn't necessarily need to be a country or a city. You could highlight a word that you're not sure what it is. So Cortana's built into Edge with her intelligence. So you can ask her questions. She'll give you the information there without having to go and search on Wikipedia or any other web browser to find the answer. So uh, she's, I would say she's always there for you. <laughs> and the last thing I just wanted to show you is the notification center, which I briefly mentioned earlier when I was using tablet mode. Um, this notification center looks exactly like it does on the phone, so a Lumia phone if any of you have got them. So again, we're going for the same experience across the PC, PC desktop, tablet and the phone. And it's got all of your settings here, you can personalize it or expand, and you've got everything you need access to, to right there. So that's everything I was going to show you in Windows 10. Uh, are there any questions? Hi Emma, can you hear me okay? I can, yes. Okay, uh, thank you, that was excellent. That was uh, uh, an excellent insight into 
to Windows 10 and also uh, some of the new features and, and stuff about it. I don't have any questions at the moment. Um, if anybody particularly has anything, then um, oh, hang on, I've got one question now. Um, what happens if we buy a PC with Windows 8 on after the 29th of July? So any PCs um, that you, so we're kind of working this out at the moment with some of the uh, kind of OEM providers, but if you buy a PC, um, you will have an option to upgrade that to Windows 10. So again, for the first year, if you buy a Windows um, PC with 8.1, um, in your updates, you'll get a notification and you'll see with the links I'm gonna send out how that actually pops up. And it'll ask if you want to upgrade to Windows 10. So you will still be able to upgrade, but if you then change that device again, then you will need to, to license yourself with Windows 10. Okay, so what we were you were saying I mean, uh, earlier was that if you've already got is it Windows 7 and 8 on the machine, then there'll be a free upgrade of that machine. But then if you then purchase another one, you'd have to register it separately. Yes, yeah, so the license essentially... I guess the most blunt way to put it is the license will die with that machine. Mm. So if you get a new machine, you will need to get a new license, yeah. Okay. And as mm -hmm. far as um, the upgrade, will it, that will be an automatic upgrade from a, from a home point of view. It will just do it itself. Right? Um, you'll get a notification of whether you want to upgrade or not. But yes, if you want to upgrade, um, as I said, I'll send you the links as to how that will work. And you will reserve your copy. Um, and then as soon as it's available, um, um, you will be able to download that onto your machine, yep. Okay. Another question is, is there a new MS which uh, will come with it? I'm not sure what you what mean. What do you mean by MS? What do you mean by MS, uh, Ginny? Microsoft Office. There we go. Will there be a new Microsoft Office that will come with 10 or will... No, so it depends on, um, so some, if you go, it depends how you buy your PC or laptop. Some laptops come with an Office 365 subscription, so if you've bought it from a retailer, um, it completely depends. Most of the time, um, it will come installed with kind of a basic Office, um, but um, it depends on which machine you buy and whether you opt in to actually have Office with it or without it. And presumably any uh, other applications, so older versions of Office and other desktop applications will just run as normal with Windows 10. Yeah, as I said, it's, your, it's Windows 10 supports a mixture of all the old traditional applications that we use, that we know and love, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, that sort of thing. Um, but then obviously there's a ton of new modern applications coming out as well. Okay, that's great. Thank you very much. So if there are any other questions, then by all means, um, you know, uh, send us an email and we'll answer those for you. But what I'll do after the this webinar is finished, I will we'll send you a, an email and we'll put in there the, the features of each of the different versions. So you can see those, mm -hmm. which um, I had a slide with that on. And also some of the next steps, which will be the links to get um, your upgrades and, and get a version of it. I'll also pop on... Um, a recording of this webinar so that you've got that to share with other people in the organization um, if you if you need to so if there are oops hang on no another question uh, is there an upgrade or is the upgrade also free for enterprise versions uh, no it's not okay so it's just purely the home version or desktop mm -hmm. version yeah, enterprise unfortunately is included in the um, in that grade. No. Okay. If you've got because Windows Enterprise you buy through volume, volume license, mm -hmm. so I believe if you've got software assurance, you may be eligible for the upgrade. But we can double check and let you know. Okay. Uh, so any other questions regarding this, then please feel free to speak to uh, your contact at Greencorn. Um, but obviously, if you are new to Greencorn and want to um, such base, then that would be great to speak to you and one of our um, consultants can have a chat with you about it. Great, thank you very much for your time everybody and thank you Emma for a very interesting webinar and um, you know, please give us a call if there's anything that we can help you with.